Hello everyone, this is Professor Ng Chi Kun from Unimas. So in this video, I'm going to continue the lecture on analysis and design of solid slabs huh? by giving you a design example. So the slab that we're going to design is a continuous slab that is having three equal spans of 3.5 meter each. The loading is as follows. So the permanent action, including floor finishes and partitions and ceilings, etc., is 2 kN per square meter. So in slab, we specify our load in terms of load per unit area. Okay, because slab is considered a 2D elements where the physical dimension is the area of the slabs huh? so meaning that we define actions as per unit area and then the variable action on the slab is 3 kN per square meter so the construction materials are grade C25 concrete and grade 500 reinforcement. The slab which is situated inside a building and subjected to a one hour fire resistance is to be designed for 50 years design life and you have to design the slab as given. So these are the solutions. Okay. So first of all we have the concrete strength of 25 megapascal and the U strength of steel is 500 megapascal. So the characteristic actions are permanent action, which is GK is 2 kN per square meter, and then the variable action is 3 kN per square meter. Normally for building, the design life is 50 years. So from Eurocode 2, table 2.1, building design life is 50 years eh? and then for durability fire and bond requirements from Eurocode 2 part 1-2 eh? section 5.7 fire resistance of uh, R60 and then table 4.1 the exposure class is XC1 and then for XC1 the indicative strength class is C20-25 according to table E1N. Okay, so we can classify the structure as structural class S4 because we are using C25-30, okay, which is more than the indicative strength class. And then from table 4.3N, the member with slab geometry, we can reduce the class by 1. So the structural class becomes S3 yeah? and then when we go through the other criteria for table 4.3n there is no uh, reduction or increase in class in the other criteria so we have structural class S3 for our slab okay and then from table 4.2 we assume that our bars are all separated so we assume a bar diameter of 8 mm in our design. So, meaning that from table 4.2, the C mean for bond is diameter of bar, which is 8 mm for separated bars. And then from table 4.4n of Eurocode 2, the C mean for durability is 10 mm according to the exposure class XC1. Okay, so C mean is 10 mm and then from close 4.4.1.3 in bracket 1 P of Eurocode 2, the delta C deviation is 10 mm. So delta C deviation is 10 mm because we don't have any description on quality control on site. Eh? Okay, so to satisfy both bond and exposure requirements, the C nominal is 10 mm, which is from C mean durability. Okay, and then delta 
C deviation is 10 mm, so it's 20 mm. And then from mirror code part 1 dash 2, table 5.8, the thickness of the slab has to be more than 80 mm with axis distance of 20 mm. So meaning that our C norm plus half of the diameter of the bar must be greater or equal to 20 mm, which is the axis distance. So this is the same as in beam calculation. Eh? So C norm is greater than 16 mm. So meaning that we can use C nominal of 20 mm. That will satisfy both bone and then the durability regarding exposure and also it will satisfy fire resistance as well. And then for slab thickness, as we have seen from table 5.8 of Eurocode 2 part 1-2, the thickness of the slab has to be more than 80 mm to satisfy the fire resistance. And then from table 7.4n, okay, for continuous structure, the basic LOD ratio can be considered as uh, 26. So if we use 26 as our basic span to depth ratio, then our L, which is 3,500 mm, which is 3.5 meters, uh, that is the span of the continuous slab. Uh. So L over D is 26, so that gives the estimated effective depth D of 135 mm. Okay, so meaning that the depth of the reinforcement that we provide is 135 mm. Okay, and then this is measured until the centroid of the bars. Huh? And then we add in the half diameter of the bar plus the nominal cover C norm. Then we get the height of the slab H, which is 159 mm. So now we try thickness of slab of 150mm. It does not have to be exactly 159mm because that is only an estimation. So we can use H equals to 150mm. So you calculate back what is the D based on 150mm thickness. So the slab self weight is... 150 mm eh, converted to meter is 0 0.15 meter multiplied by the thickness. Then that will give you the load per unit area, okay, which is 3.75 kN per square meter. Okay, and then the permanent action excluding self weight is given as 2 kN per square meter. So meaning that the characteristic permanent action is 5.75 kN per square meter. Okay, and then the characteristic variable action is 3 kN per square meter. So that gives us the design action of 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK of 12.26 kN per square meter. So meaning that in the slab that is given here so we have the supports here here and here okay so the span is 3.5 meter each remember the supports for slabs are the beams huh? okay whenever you have beams then that will be supporting the slabs if you don't have beams then your slab has no support huh? okay and then this design action Meaning that if you have 1 meter square by 1 meter square on the slab, then the total load is this much. In this 1 meter square by 1 meter square area. And then for the analysis, okay, we are using table 3.12 of uh, BS 110 part 1, 1997 uh, to determine the bending moments and shear forces. You can also refer to the design guidebook where the table is given. So in your design guidebook, you have this table 3.12 from BSL10 part 1, 1997. Okay. 
So here we normally assume our n span as pin. Okay. So in this table you have two options. Okay. One is to assume that the n support is pin and then another option is to consider the n span here as continuous. If we assume that it's continuous, then you have a negative moment here, which is given as 0.04 FL here. Okay, but normally we we'll only use the assumption of a pin N for the N support. Okay, so the moment here is 0. Huh? So always remember that. Okay, we will only be using this option of assuming the N support as a pin N. And then the rest will be the same. Huh? For the first interior support is given by these values here. Middle of interior span is given by this value here. And then for interior supports is given by these values here for the moment and shear. So we consider a one meter strip. Okay, so I mean that if the slab is this way, we'll consider the slab having four supports like this with equal span of 3.5 meters. And then that is the width of the slab. Okay, so this is the width. But normally we don't use the full width for design. We're only using one meter strip. Okay, so meaning that we will be using only one meter width in our design. Okay, so when we consider one meter strip, the design load per span is the load per unit area multiplied by 3.5 meters. Okay, and then multiply by one meter width. So that will give you 42.91 kilonewton per meter width. So meaning that for every span of the slab here, the total action or the total load is 42.91 kilonewton for every one meter width. Okay. So, in this case, F is 42.91 kN. Eh? We put a per meter width there just to remind you that we only design for one meter width like that. Okay, so we only consider the total force in this one meter strip. And at A and D, Okay, they are the N supports, so the shear is 0.4F, and then for B and C, they are the first interior supports. Huh? So we don't have any interior support here, we only have two first interior supports, huh? which are B and C. Okay, so first interior supports, the Shear is 0.6 F. Okay, and then at P and R, they are near the middle of N spans. Right, so near the middle of N spans, the moment is a positive moment with 0.086 F L. So that gives 12.92 kilonewton meter per meter width. And then for Q here. Okay, so for Q, we have the interior span. Eh? So near the middle of interior span, the moment is positive, moment of 0.063 FL. And then for B and C, okay, there are first interior supports. So first interior supports, you have negative moments of 0, 0.0 at 6 fl which gives you negative 12.92 kilonewton meter 
per meter width. So these two moments have similar or the same uh, values uh, in terms of magnitude. Okay, so we can design B, C, P, and R in one step. Uh. Okay, so in one step we can design for the moment for P, R, and B, C. So next, we can uh, draw the shear force and bending moment for the slabs like this and like this. Huh? Okay. So for the main reinforcement design, first we have to calculate the effective depth. So effective depth is H minus C nominal minus half diameter of bar, which is 126 mm. Okay. And then Normally, we calculate the minimum and maximum reinforcement area first. So, S mean is 0.26 FCTM of FYK BTD. So, in this case, for grade 25 concrete, FCTM is 2.6 MPa from table 3.1 of your code 2, part 1-1. So that gives us minimum of 170 square millimeter per meter width. I always put per meter here, so that reminds us we are designing for one meter width of the slab. And this value has to be greater than 151 square millimeter per meter width calculated from 0.13 BD. Yeah? Okay. So S minimum is 170 square millimeter and you can go to the steel table to determine what is the arrangement of steel bar for S minimum of 170 square mm. So if you refer to your design guidebook, okay, if you look at table B for sectional area per meter width for various bar spacings, huh? So this is the table that we use when we design the structure with a width of 1 meter. So in our slab design, we are using the width of 1 meter. Okay. So in this case, when we use add mm bars, okay, and just now the steel is 170 square millimeter. So 168 is the nearest to 170 square mm, although it's a little bit uh, smaller than 170 square mm, but we assume that that is okay. Eh? Okay, so meaning that we use a spacing of 300 mm. So when we specify this arrangement of steel, we use the grade of steel of H and then diameter of 8 and then dash spacing of 300 mm so meaning that we provide h add at spacing of 300 mm in this case okay so secondary bar we can use h add at spacing of 300 mm which is the minimum reinforcement so as provided is 168 square millimeter in this case and then for maximum reinforcement is normally 0.04 times the cross-sectional area of concrete. So the concrete has a dimension of 1 meter width times thickness of 150 mm. So 0.04 or 4% of that is 6,000 square millimeter per meter width. So near the middle of N span and its first interior supports, they have the same uh, magnitude of moments uh, so we can design P, R, B and C moments uh, okay, using just one step of calculation so first you calculate value of K by using M over F, C, K, B, D square so we get K less than K balance so meaning that we do not need any compression reinforcement so next we calculate the lever arm which is given by this equation here 
and we make sure that this value is not greater than 0.95 d yeah? so in slab you have to be careful of this limit here okay in beams normally this won't be exceeded but in slabs normally this value will be exceeded so when we calculate the moment arm or the lever arm okay is more than 0.95 d but this value should not be more than 0.95 95d so z we have to take it as 0.95d yeah? okay so this is supposed to be greater okay in this case okay so in this case we say that we can only use 0.95d in our design so the next step of calculation is by calculating the amount of the longitudinal reinforcement so is m over 0.7 fyk z so z as we have mentioned we can only use 0.95 d yeah? okay we cannot use 0.97 d because it's not less than 0.95 d so in this case we get our edge required as 248 square millimeter per meter length so if you refer to the steel table okay so to provide for steel area of about 248 square millimeter we need a spacing of 175 to get the total steel area of 287 square millimeter per meter width so in this case we said that we provide H at a spacing of 175. Okay, and then at P and R, because they are positive moments, so we provide it at the bottom of the slab. And then for B and C, they have negative moments or hogging moments. So the reinforcement has to be provided at the top of the slab. Next, we design for the positive moment near the middle of the interior span, which is at section Q. Okay, so at Q, the moment is 9.46 kilonewton meter per meter width. So when you calculate K, is less than K balance, so no compression reinforcement is required. And then after that, we calculate Z. Z is more than 0.95d so we cannot use a value more than 0.95d so z is set to 0.95d and we calculate the steel reinforcement and we have 182 square millimeter per meter width and then if you refer to the steel table we can get the spacing of 250mm for 8mm bars with provided steel of 201 square millimeter per meter width okay so this is for positive moment at Q so the steel reinforcement is provided at the bottom of the slab so next we look at shear okay so the maximum design shear force is at the first interior supports B and C okay so in this case we check for the shear resistance at the first interior supports uh, B and C okay so the design resistance is given by this uh, VRDC equation here which we have mentioned before and then when we calculate K is more than 2 so not okay so we use K of 2 in the calculation and then the uh, S1 is the provided steel at B and C. Yeah? Okay, so the provided steel area at B and C is 287 square millimeter per meter width, and then B is 1000 mm and D is 126 mm. So this value is smaller than 0 0.02 so it's okay okay so we can use 0 0.0023 in the calculation of this vrdc okay so vrdc 
as calculated is 54.18 kN per meter width. So remember that when, when we are using 1 meter width, then the shear resistance is also for 1 meter width. Eh? Okay. And then the minimum value for VRDC is given by this equation here. So we calculate based on this equation, we get 62.37 kN per meter width. Okay. So VRDC cannot be smaller than this value. Eh? Okay. So meaning that the VRDC for this lab is 62.37 kN per meter width. Okay. You cannot use 54.18 because it's less than 62.37. So in this case, our VED is 25.75 kN per meter width. And then VRDC is 62.37 kN per meter width. So meaning that your shear resistance VRDC is more than the applied shear force. So then the checking is okay. Okay, so if your strength is more than the applied load effects or the affected load effects, then the design is okay. Okay, and then for the maximum design shear force at A and D, which are at the end supports, okay, so for end supports, the applied shear force or affected load effect is 17.16 kN per meter width and then the design shear resistance is given by these equations here okay similar to the previous section and then row one is the provided steel okay over b d yeah? okay so in this case you have to be careful uh, on the arrangement of steel bars uh, okay at the end support there Okay, so at this end support here, the bar here does not anchor into the support like that. Okay, we are leaving this bar here not anchored into the end support here. Okay, so in this case, we cannot use this steel bar okay, for the calculation of shear resistance. So remember that we still have the steel bar provided for the nominal hogging moment, okay, which is 25% of what you have here. So here is 100%. Eh? Okay, so we need only 25% here. But if the 25% here is less than AS minimum, then we have to use AS minimum okay so in this particular example 25 percent of this hundred percent which is uh, 287 square millimeter is definitely less than s minimum because s minimum is 168 square millimeter per meter width okay so half of 287 is only 144 okay so that is less than s minimum so we have to use s minimum here so being that the steel bar that we have here to resist shear is the S minimum provided, which is 168 square millimeter per meter width. Eh? Okay, so don't use 287. Eh? 287 is not correct. Okay, because the bar which is uh, 287 square millimeter per meter width here is not anchored properly into the support okay so we are using the top bars of value of as minimum eh, in this particular design calculation so our vrdc is 44.79 kilonewton per meter width and then our vmim is still 62.37 kilonewton per meter width so in this case, VRDC is still the same, okay, as the previous section, okay. So in this case, our VED is less than VRDC, which is the strength of the section. So if the applied load effects is less than the strength, then it's okay. And then for deflection, 
we have to check near the middle of spans uh, at supports there is no deflection uh, okay so i'm doing that we only check deflections at p q and r okay so since the bending moment at p and r is higher so only the deflection at these two positions is verified so by right you still have to check for section q uh, okay with a smaller moment but in this particular example we only check the deflection at p and r so the percentage of required tension reinforcement is 248 square millimeter at p and r so this is the as required huh? okay and then divided by bd is 0 0.0020 and then row 0 is the square root of the concrete strength so it's 0 0.005 and then if you refer to table 7.4n of real code 2 okay because our slab is a continuous slab okay so k is equals to 1.3 from table 7.4n uh, for continuous slabs like this or continuous structure like this okay and then for rho smaller than rho 0 then we use equation 7.16a so you just substitute all the values into this equation and we can get L over D of 63.9 so the modification factor for span less than 7 meter there is none so we keep it as 1 and then modification factor for steel area provided so as provided is 2 at 7 square millimeter per meter width and then as required is 248 square millimeter per meter width so we can use a factor of 1.16 uh. so remember that this factor cannot be more than 1.5 Okay, 1.16 is okay. So in this case, the allowable span to depth ratio is 63.9 times 1 times 1.16. So this is for span more than 7 meters. Huh? So the span is not more than 7 meters. So the factor is 1. Okay, 1.16 is for the modification factor for steel area provided. So the allowable span to depth ratio is 74 so the actual span to depth ratio is 27.8 so meaning that the L over D actual is less than the L over D available so it's okay okay so this L over D ratio is much more than the actual so meaning that the design is not that economical okay in fact we can use a thinner slab dimension so probably we can try h equals to 125 mm so you may try thickness of 125 mm as your own exercise uh, in designing this slab and see whether it can satisfy all the design requirements or not for cracking so since our thickness of slab is less than 200 mm so we can use the simplified rules so the maximum spacing is 3h so 3h is 450 mm so it's more than 400 mm so we can only use a maximum spacing of 400 mm in this case so the maximum bar spacing for the main bar or primary reinforcement is 250 mm so it's less than 400 mm so it's okay eh? and then for the secondary bars it cannot be more than 3.5 h so 3.5 h is 525 mm it's more than 450 mm so it's not okay so we can use only maximum spacing of 450 mm and then the maximum bar spacing for the secondary bar is as minimum the spacing for as minimum so that is h at a spacing of 300 mm so Tremor mm is less than 450 mm so it's okay right so that is all for the design calculation so now we want to put all these design values 
or the provided steel into a drawing. So if you look at this drawing, so the detailed drawings of the slab that you have designed is as follows. Huh? Okay, so we'll look at one by one huh, of the steel reinforcement that we provide. So first of all, let's look at the steel reinforcement that we provide at section P and R, okay, which is the steel reinforcement indicated by this steel here. Okay. So this steel is provided to resist bending moment at P and R, which is H8 at spacing of 175 mm. So the first reinforcement that we look at is the reinforcement that we provide for the design of section P and R. Okay, so that is the steel reinforcement as designed here. Okay, so this reinforcement has a diameter of 8 mm, which is H8, and then a spacing of 175 mm and is provided at the bottom of the slab. Okay, so it's H8 the spacing of 01. 01 is the reference number for the bar. Okay, and then we have 175 mm spacing and then it's provided at the bottom. So we specify the reinforcement like this. And then it's provided from here to here. Okay, so meaning that these bars are having spacing of 175 mm is running in that direction. Okay, and then beyond this length here, we need to provide anchorage. Okay, so this anchorage here is normally calculated by the bonding length plus the effective depth D. Yeah? Okay. So the bond length normally is taken as 1.25D. Yeah? Okay. So the total length here is 2.25D as a true of thumb. Yeah? And then the next reinforcement that we look at is the reinforcement that you have designed for section Q, which is a positive moment. Okay, so section Q, the reinforcement is this reinforcement here. Okay, so it's symmetrical on the other side. Eh? Okay, so I only draw half of the slab. Okay, so this reinforcement here is an mm bar. Okay, and then the spacing is through 50 mm, and I label this as number three bars. And then this has to be provided at the bottom of the slab because it's positive moment. And then this bar has to be provided from here to here. Okay, so you have many bars running in this direction at the spacing of 250 mm. Okay, and then next we look at the distribution steel. Okay. So, distribution steel for this bar here is actually this bar, okay? Okay, so this bar is level as number 5, okay? So, for distribution steel, we can use the AS minimum of spacing of 300 mm, and this has to be at the bottom because it's for this bottom bar, so distribution steel for this bottom bars here. So this bar has to be provided from here to here. Okay, so meaning that this bar will be running in this direction with spacing of 300 mm provided from here to here. Okay, from here to here. All right. And then next we look at the distribution steel for this H as a spacing of 250. So it's this reinforcement here. Okay. So this is also bar number 5 because it's similar to this bar. Okay. Okay, it's also at the bottom. Okay, so we can level it as the same bars here. Okay.
Okay, so this will be running from here to the other side of the symmetric curve span there. Okay, all right, and then we have uh, bar number two here. Okay, so bar number two is for the hogging moment at B and C. Yeah? So C is on this side, yeah? which is symmetrical. So we only indicate the design for section B. So here, section B, you have a negative moment. So negative moment, the bars has to be on top. Okay. So the bars here is the H8 that's passing of 1, 7, 5, but now it's on the top of the slab. Okay, the spacing is the same as this because they have the same magnitude of moment. But now this bar has to be on top. Okay, and the length provided has to be 0.3L. Huh? Remember that at 0.15L, you can reduce by 50% from the simplified rules of uh, Ketterman. But if you reduce by 50%, it will be less than as minimum. So we don't reduce. Okay. We provide 100% until 0.3L. Okay. So this bar here is provided in the length of uh, beyond 0 0.050 or 0.3L. Okay. And then after that, we look at the distribution bar, okay, for the top bar, which is this bar here, okay. So this is the distribution bar for H8 that's passing of uh, 175T here, okay. So this distribution still is having 300mm spacing, so we can level it as the same bar as these bottom bars here which is distribution steel for the bottom bars and also distribution steel for the bottom bars here okay but in this case it's at the top t yeah? okay so this will be the distribution bar for the bars that is designed for the hogging moment which is 0 0.5 here okay okay so the last steel bar that we provide is this steel bar here. Okay, so this steel bar here has to be properly anchored into the support here because it's providing the shear resistance and also for resisting nominal hogging moment over here. So that is this bar number 04 here. Okay, so here normally is 25% of what you have here okay 25% of bar 01 but 25% of bar 01 is less than as minimum so we provide as minimum here as i have mentioned just now huh? okay so as minimum is h at spacing of 300 mm and it's at the top of the slab so it's t okay so those are all the reinforcements that you need to provide in this slab design. So when you cut across a section like this, okay, then you see that we have bar number one, which is running in this direction here until here. Okay, so this is bar number one. Okay, and bar number two is running from here to here. Okay. So there is bar number two here, which is this bar here. Okay, it's running from here to here and beyond. Huh? Okay, on the other side, which is the mirror image. And then bar number three here is this bar here. Okay, so it has to be properly anchored. So bar number three is designed for section Q. Huh? Okay. And then we have bar number four, which is here. Okay, which is designed for the nominal hogging moment at the end support there. Okay, and then we have bar number five, which are the distribution bars. Huh? So bar number five is all the same for the top and the bottom. So we just use 
the same type of steel because the length is the same for all three distribution steel okay and then the spacing is also the same so we can label them as the same uh, bar number five bar number five here and also bar number five there okay but some are on top some are at the bottom okay so that's all for the uh, detailing here okay in this uh, particular example and i think i'm missing bar number five here for the top here huh? okay so that is for this steel there okay so you see that there's a bar there there and there so there there has to be a bar here as well okay provided from here to here okay so that is missing from this uh, particular uh, drawing here so you may have to add on uh, by yourself okay so that's all for the design example okay so i'll see you again in the next lecture thank you very much for listening